In this video I want to go over a setup of the robot, calibration of the robot, and then modifying the software for your own robot projects. So we'll start out here on the robot page. Um, that's under GitHub, under my name, under AR2. If we come up here, we have all the files that we can download for it. We've got schematics, the kinematic model, we've got all of our software source codes, uh, the manuals, build materials, and then the, um, the files for the uh, Arduino board. So let's start with that. First thing I'm going to want to do is install the Arduino software on my computer. So I come here to this page and download the uh, Arduino software. Then I will download the, um, this file, the sketch file, and put that on my computer. So I have that file right here um, under sketch underscore anandrobot. So we pop that open and inside we have sketch anandrobot.ino. So the file with the same name inside the folder. So when we open that up, the Arduino software is going to open up our sketch file. Give it a second here for it to open. And within here, I can look at all of the code that drives the stepper motors and keeps them all synchronized. There's an algorithm in here that keeps all six motors starting and stopping at the same time and sets the directions and it's kind of the, the controller behind, behind the motion there. Um, so right here in the first section, um, there's... Um, Right here in this section, there's a few things that we can change. The first is the speed. Um, it's set for default at 100. If you want to speed your robot up, you would set that multiplier smaller. Um, if you want to um, slow the robot down, if you're having resonance or speed issues or you're missing steps, you could change this to 150 or 200 and play with that multiplier value to slow your robot down. Down here, we have motor directions. I found that when I went from the analog drivers to the digital drivers, that the digital drivers were rotating the motors in the opposite direction, which was a problem. I didn't want to rewire each of my drivers and change my electrical schematics, so I added this functionality into the software where I can give these numbers a 0 or a 1 to control the direction. So using these DM542T uh, stepper drivers from Stepper Online, these are the ones I recommend. Um, these drivers, I need to set this for a zero. If I was using the analog drivers that want the motor to go the other way, I would set all of these values to a one. Um, so that controls rotation direction. The next thing to talk about is these values. Uh, calibration is a separate procedure. So these control which direction the joint turns during the calibration procedure. So with the physical construction of my robot, I was able to um, put the limit switches in such a way that most of my axes would go in the negative direction and then zero out on their far negative limit. A couple of them had to uh, bottom out on their tall uh, positive limit. So these values let you set the direction your robot's going to turn when you calibrate to get to that limit switch. So if you've built a robot that is physically different than mine or is a mirror image from mine in some way and your limit switch is on the opposite side of the joint you have to rotate your joint the other way, you just flip this number from a 0 to a 1 or a 1 to a 0. So these values here control the direction my robot turns. Um, so the other thing to look at here is under tools, under board, we want to make sure that the Arduino Mega is selected. And we'll take note that my board connected on port COM5. Yours may be different, but mine is on 5. So once we have all that out of the way, we hit upload. It's uh, down here, it will say uploading, and then it will say done uploading. So once that's done, we can close the Arduino software. And then the next thing we would need to do is check that um, once that software is loaded and my robot's connected, uh, via its Ethernet line, uh, that when I manually toggle each of these switches with my finger, that the LED light on the Arduino board goes on each time the switch is hit. Um, that LED light has to come on when each limit switch is hit. If it doesn't, you have a wire that's not made, and you need to fix that um, before you try and calibrate the robot. So once that works, all your limit switches, when you trigger or toggle each of your limit switches, the LED light on the board comes on. We can now look at um, installing the software. So we can either download the software exe files or the source code. The exe files is obviously the easiest way to open the program. If you want to manipulate the program, you're welcome to. You can download the source code. If you download the source code, you're going to need Python uh, 2.7 installed, and you will need the PySerial module installed. And you'll come here, download the PySerial module, and then do a Google search on how to install a Python wheel. Um, so that being said, if we go to the folder where um, I have my source code, I open up the ar2.py folder and it opens up my software. So once I've verified all my limit switches are good, my, uh, I set my COM port to 5 and hit set COM 
uh, you only need to do this once, I don't need to do it again, it will remember it. I can go to calibration and hit auto calibrate and now the robot is going to go into calibration mode and drive itself to each of its far limits and it will basically, the software will now be calibrated to where the robot's position actually is. So as soon as that's done, let's give it a second here. Alright, so now Calibration successful, the robot's at its full limits, minus 170 on J1, it's at minus 132 on J2, and so on. So now the robot is fully calibrated. Um, at this point, that's pretty much it. You could start using your robot at this point when it's calibrated. Um, so next, let's talk about um, a custom robot, if I want to put in some custom calibration values. So um, first thing, let me just rotate J1 back around. Set my speed to 100. So I'm going to rotate joint one around so the robot's facing me. It's a little better, easier to explain. So the first thing you might be wondering is, okay, well, in my limits here, why does J2 go minus 132 degrees all the way back? It'd be minus 90 degrees straight up, and it would be zero degrees flat out. Well, that was just the way that I chose to configure my robot frame, and that's what these Denovit Hardenberg parameters are about. These define my robot frame and, and how my robot uh, axis um, uh, ranges are set up. We'll talk about that a little bit more at the end here. Um, but for right now, um, we know that um, when it's all the way back and I put an angle gauge on it, um, I'm at minus 132 degrees. So in your custom robot, you would put your switch and configure your robot and run the calibration and get the arm back to its full limit and whatever it was and then put an angle gauge on it and measure what that is. And I found that on mine that J2 was back at negative 132 degrees. So I put that in right here. So we're going to use J2 for an example. It's already calibrated, but we'll pretend that we don't know what these values are. So I'm going to put in negative 132 for my angle gauge all the way back. I know that I want it to come out completely flat at zero degrees, so I'm going to put a zero here. Now if I wanted it to only come to 20 degrees, I could do that. I could put in a 20 here if, if I had a limit or some reason, but I don't. Um, I want it to go to zero. And so now I need to figure out how many steps of the motor it's going to take to go from minus 132 all the way forward to zero. And now, I already know that it's 14,500, but let's pretend we don't know that, and let's pretend we have to figure that out. So let's go to the main control screen, and we need to figure out how many steps. So if I click this radio button up here, I can jog the joints in steps rather than in degrees. And so over here on J2, I can put in 1,000 steps to start with. I can set my speed down a little bit to 50. I don't need it to go that fast. And I'm going to count how many steps it takes. So, so that'll be 1,000. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I'm at 10,000 steps right now, but I have a little bit of a problem and that my, uh, the head of my robot's going to hit the table if I go too much further. So I need to get J3 out of the way. So I'm going to put that to 139 degrees, hit minus. I'm going to get J3 out of my way for right now. So you'll have some of this back and forth where you're moving joints out of your way while you're trying to figure out how many steps it takes to get your arm to go in, in one direction or another. So now I'm going to go back two steps and I'm going to go back to what I was doing. And so we're at 10,000, 11, 12, 13, 14. So right now I can see that I'm extremely close. I'm getting close to zero degrees. I'm not quite there. And a thousand would be too much. So I'm going to change this to 100. And so now I'm at 14,100, 200, 300, 400. And when I click it, that last time it doesn't, I hit an axis limit. It's, it's within one step and it just doesn't want to let me get to 14,500, which is where I think I need to be. So that is why I put in this force calibration to mid-range button. If I click that and I come back to my main screen, it basically centers all of my axis limits and it tells me that I've done that and I'm in a danger zone. So I'm in a dangerous place right now. If I make a mistake, I can very easily overdrive an axis and damage one of my limit switches or damage my robot. So you have to be very careful when you do this. So we know that I'm at 1,400 steps. I'm going to do one more. There we go. So now I'm at 15 or 14,500 steps. And if I put an angle gauge on that, I'm perfectly flat. That's right where I want to be. So now I know that it took 14,500 steps to go from negative 132 all the way forward to zero. 
So here in my calibration, I would put in 14,500, which is already there, um, and then I would hit Save Calibration. So I would do that for each axis here. I would go through this process of figuring out how many steps for the rotation of the axis. But after I hit Save Calibration, I have to do an Auto Calibrate. So now my robot, well, everything I've put in and saved has now been calibrated and taken effect. So that's how you would custom calibrate uh, an axis. Um, so let's uh, talk about the Denovit Hardenberg parameters. So these parameters are basically um, define the kinematics so that X, Y, Z all pitch and roll work correctly so that the wire frame of my robot is set correctly and my math works correctly. Um, if we go back to the project page, um, I have listed a series, if you're interested in how the math works, I have a series of kinematic videos on how the kinematics work. Those will explain it in much more detail, um, but basically if you also go to the project page and uh, open up the, um, the uh, Excel file, let me find that here, I have that here. If I open up this Excel file, this has all the kinematics worked out on a spreadsheet, so it's visually you can see what's going on. You can see all of the, you can see all of the uh, rotational matrices and everything that's going on. And I go through all of this detail in the in the videos and the kinematic videos. But what I wanted to show you was this wireframe model. So these link lengths, arm lengths, rotation angles, these are all of the parameters that define the wireframe for my robot. And so if I go into my software under the calibration screen, these DH parameters, everything from that wireframe I just showed you, all the values are plunked in here. So this is what defines my robot. Um, so if you had built your own robot, you would need to measure all of your link length arms and figure out you know, um, your, your angles and plunk them all in here if you had your own custom robot and you wanted it configured differently than, than mine is. So that, that covers all of that. Um, I highly recommend watching the the uh, kinematic videos if you want to know more about that. Um, I'm going to run the robot home here. So when I do run the auto calibrate, that works pretty well. It gets the robot calibrated and that should be all you need in most cases. Um, but there's one other thing I wanted to talk about before we end this video and that was the fine calibration. Um, and that's what these gold buttons are about. So after I've got my robot started up, I'm fully calibrated. The first thing I want to do is teach a reference position. And this reference position will be from here until the end of time will be my master reference position. So if I replace limit switches or motors or have to work on my robot, I, I have a position to refer back to. Um, so if I click go to find calibration position, it's going to go, the robot's going to move to my position that I taught. And I like to use blocks as um, square blocks give me multiple surfaces to line up to each other. So in this case, um, my my, uh, I've got a square robot block. I've got a square block in the robot gripper, and then I've got my pointer holder that I use as my reference. So we can see here if I run my finger across the front, I'm a little proud on the front. I'm lined up really nice on the side, so it looks like my X is off just a tiny bit. So I can come back here to main controls. I can set my X value to one and hit minus a couple times. Right there, that's perfect. I'm right back in alignment. Um, using blocks also allows me, I can see the space between the blocks. I know you can't see it from the camera here, but you can see the slight air space and you can see if it's flat and true and if it's lined up in each direction. So once I've made that minor adjustment, I can come here and I can click Execute Fine Calibration. And what that does is re just does a tiny little calibration on the robot to get it back to this known position that I taught uh, a long time ago. Um, so I highly recommend teaching a reference position. This can be anywhere. This can be on the corner of your workstation. This could be your gripper in a fixture. Um, you can choose any reference position you want, but I highly recommend something like this where you have multiple sides and flat planes that you can align. Um, and then once you do get it jogged into your position and you want to save that right up here, 
teach find calibration position. That's how you would teach the position, and it's stored right here. But I would recommend only teaching it the first time and then leaving it um, and not messing with it anymore. So I'm going to run the robot back home here. Um, so that concludes everything that I wanted to go over uh, as far as calibrating the robot, starting it up, and, um, and modifying the software for your own robot. So if you have any questions, my email address is on the project page, and thank you for watching.